been more than 13 years since Philippine environmental activist and radio host Jerry Ortega was shot dead on the tropical island of Palawan. His family and friends are continuing their seemingly unending fight for justice since then. Even after what they say is damning evidence, the man accused of ordering the hit, former provincial governor Joel Reyes, is in hiding, while his brother, also implicated, is a mayor. We just really want to be able to continue with, with the trial, to continue with the case, and hopefully no more delays. Because delays, you know, the, the adage, you know, justice delayed is justice denied. I feel like it doesn't really quite capture the kind of pain it, it puts on the victims of families. Because 13 years, we should have already gone, you know, moved on with our lives and, and, and did other things. I don't think my dad would want us here. You know, he was someone who loved all of us too. I don't think that this is the future he wanted for his family. You know, to have his wife and his kids be in protests 13 years after his death. In a country where hundreds of journalists and environmental defenders have been killed in the past two decades, Ortega's murder on January 24th, 2011, stands out for its brazenness. The father of five was shot in the back of the head at a second-hand clothes shop along a busy road in the Palawan capital of Puerto Princesa. Ortega had just finished his morning radio show where he frequently railed against politicians, including Reyes, who he accused of corruption and allowing Palawan's forests and minerals to be plundered. When I was standing there, I was like, is this going to happen to me too? Kind of like feeling. So it's a mixed emotion of uh, anger, rage, fear, anxiety, everything. And just an uh, emotional moment for me. Reyes has always denied involvement in the murder. However, Ortega's killer was later caught and the gun he used traced to a close aide of the former governor. A bodyguard who hired the hit squad, turned state witness, and implicated Reyes. But Reyes remains free after many legal twists and turns in the case, leaving Ortega's family, friends, and rights groups to lament over the prevailing culture of impunity in the Philippines. Hopefully, if we are to prevail, maybe people like my dad you know, people who are brave voices, who speak truth to power, maybe people like him could survive. Maybe it would, you know, send a message that you can't just kill people for speaking out. Maybe it will send a message that just because you're powerful, you're not going to get away with it. Reyes claims that he was framed for Ortega's murder and that he could not receive a fair trial in Palawan. Through his legal team, Reyes is trying to move the trial to Manila, which is regarded by the victims as a delay tactic. Ortega was a passionate defender of Palawan's environment, home to beautiful beaches, stunning coral reefs, and biodiverse forests. Of course, I feel angered, but you know, uh, I have to go. I think you can see my frustration already, uh, but, you know, I have to be sane in everything that I do. Of course, I do as much as I can to continue with what Jerry started. The Ortega family and rights activists point to the long list of journalists and environmentalists killed in recent years and the lack of justice for those victims. In Palawan, the murder of someone as high profile as Ortega had a chilling effect on journalists and activists. He was able, kind of like able to set some a, a high bar for Palawan journalism in terms of uh, uh, having the courage and the determination to go after real stories that matter. It was sad because it was a demonstration that 
this kind of journalism can be dangerous to everyone, to, to media practitioners. So it had a chilling effect. It has a chilling effect on the on the uh, mindset of all journalists here in Palawan, including myself. Anda often collaborated with Ortega on stories. One of their most sensitive exposés, and the one that Anda is convinced got Ortega killed, was about the alleged misuse of millions of dollars from the Malampaya gas field off Palawan. Since Ortega's death, Anda says he had been more cautious in his reporting. Other activists say that the effect of such retaliations are not restricted to journalists alone and warn that anyone could become the next victim. He worked with the ABS-CBN Foundation and um, working with such an institution, you may probably think that he would be insulated from these threats, but the fact that he was killed actually generated a lot of questions. Why is, you know, and why did it happen? So it can happen to anyone. And um, if it happens to such a personality, how much more for our community partners, you know, the indigenous peoples, the farmers, the fishers, the women, you know, only ordinary barangay residents. So it's, uh, it has created a chilling effect. Soon after the killing of another broadcaster, Juan Jumalon, in 2023, the Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos had said attacks on journalists would not be tolerated. In April 2024, the Presidential Task Force on Media Security said the suspected gunman in that shooting had been arrested, signalling the Marcos administration's commitment to ensuring that perpetrators of violence are arrested and made to pay for their crimes. 199 journalists have been killed in the Philippines between 1986 and 2023. The 2023 Global Impunity Index, published by the Committee to Protect Journalists, ranks the Philippines as the eighth worst country in terms of prosecuting the killers of journalists. 